you go to the lesson two section two, which deals with memory. So in two pupils, we'll be able to describe the difference between main memory and backing and storage, and also describe some of the features and uses of RAM and ROM. Pupils aiming to pass at a high level will be able to describe the difference between registers, cache memory, main memory, and backing and storage. Describe the function in the relative speeds of access, and also be able to answer questions with regards to the concept of addressability. They should also be able to calculate the amount of RAM that's addressable by a given computer. So just to do a quick recap, in this particular lesson we're going to look at the backing storage and the memory part, which so far we've not really looked at in any great detail. The main memory falls into two types, RAM, which is random access memory, and ROM, which is read-only memory. Nothing to do with sheets, by the way. Okay, RAM. RAM is a computer's short-term working memory. So if a machine is quoted as having 2 gig of RAM, what this means in plain English is it's got 2 gig of memory into which every time you load a program, it's loaded into it. Now, remember, your operating system will already be taking some of that. This explains why that when you uh, have many, many programs open, that you find your computer gets very sluggish. Um, you've used all the computer's short-term memory, but then actually you so there is a problem with just having RAM. If every time the power switches off and the data disappears, how is your computer going to know what to do the next time it switches on? Answer to that is ROM. ROM stands for read-only memory. Now this is memory that always retains its contents, even when the power is lost. This concept is even used by your mobile phones to store their operating systems on. So they know However, Backing storage, which we will cover more about later on, all you need to know at this point in the course is they are used to store permanent copies of your files. Now you do have various examples such as hard disk drives, USB flash drives, magnetic tapes, or the optical discs which are CDs, DVDs, Blu-ray drives, but there will be more on these, these media late, later. To summarise, RAM is random access memory. It's used to store programs and the operating system. It is volatile. It loses the contents when there is no power. ROM stands for read-only memory. Contents cannot be changed once they're, once they're set, uh, but it does not require constant power to hold data. And backing storage devices are used to store permanent copies of files and data. Moving on to the higher level content. So, so far we've we need to look at the three main types we've covered already, which are registers, main memory, and backing storage. However, if you look at RAM, there are actually two types of RAM, what's known as static RAM or dynamic RAM. Now, static RAM is very, very fast, but 
comparatively, it is more, much more expensive than what's known as dynamic RAM. Dynamic RAM is actually the, the conventional RAM that you will upgrade your machine with. Static RAM is usually reserved for cache memory, which we'll talk more about in a little bit. Now, dynamic RAM, far more information about that in your official notes. If you've ever encountered any problems on a web page, one of the standard bits of advice you'll get is have you cleared your temporary net files or your cache files? In this term, a cache is a store of all the temporary net files that you use. Now, the reason you store them is that if you look at that web page again, your web browser doesn't actually need to go and download all of the images and all. It's already there. You've already been there. So it's safe. The computer uses the same principle. It guesses that if you use an instruction, I don't know, five, ten times, you may want, you're probably going to use it again. So it'll keep that instruction in cache memory. Or maybe if you're looking at instruction number 10, it takes a guess you're probably going to want number 11 and 12 as well. So it might grab that as well. A very complex algorithm to, 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 to what would be stored in the cache. But the purpose of it, as a general rule of thumb, the larger the storage capacity, so backing storage such as hard drives being the biggest, they've generally got the slowest access speeds. As, is, as the capacity generally gets smaller, the access speed generally gets faster. And there's always a balance between those two. A processor can only address a finite amount of memory. This would be the same example as a house on a street. You can only have so many houses. The longer the street is, the more houses you can have, so the more addresses you'll need. Now, just again, just like a street, every location in memory has a unique address. The amount of memory address was primarily controlled by the address bus. This actually sets the number of memory locations that can be addressed. And it even so to calculate the maximum possible amount of memory that a computer can address, there are two main steps. You, you do 2 to the power of the address bus, and that gives you the amount of locations. And then at each location, you can store a word length, which actually usually is the size of a data bus. So if we do an example where a computer has a 32-bit address bus and a 24-bit data bus, 2 to the power of 32 comes out approximately 4.2 million. So that means you've got 4.2 million locations. To summarize, cache memory is a small amount of onboard memory used by the CPU to help improve efficiency. To calculate the addressable mem memory, it's 2 to the power of the address bus times the data bus. In terms of speed access, it goes from backing storage up to registers, but in terms of capacity, way down at registers, building its way up to backing storage.